Today's, inshallah, brief reminder is based on a few conversations I had in this last one week. As you know, people call at times they need some help, they, they're facing challenges in their own life. And I remember I had to give the same advice to three different people and, and, I, and I thought, you know what, probably it might be the best thing to just talk about this inshallah. So first of all, I had a brother who came to me and he was talking to me about his, some of his issues that he's going through in his life. And I asked him that what solutions do you have in mind? Before I give you my solutions, before I suggest you some solutions, what solutions do you have in mind? So he says that, in my opinion, these are some of the solutions. So I said, you know what, actually I was about to give you and suggest you the same solutions. So you're already on the right path, just apply these solutions, and inshallah everything should be taken care of. But he says, applying the solution is the problem. So I say, you have a problem, you have the solution, but not the solution is the problem? I don't, it doesn't make sense. So he says, I cannot apply the solution. I said, why can you not apply the solution? He said that I'm too worried about what people are going to say about me. I'm too worried what people are going to say, what think, they're going to think about me. And subhanAllah, I gave the same advice to one other youth who had called me during the week. And it brings me to this one verse of the Quran in particular. This is in Surah Zumar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Allah gives us the example of a man. Now though this ayah of the Qur'an is strictly talking about those who commit shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you think about it on a deeper level, this ayah has exactly to do with this. So Allah says in the Qur'an, ضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا رَجُلًا فِيهِ شُرَكَاءُ مُتَشَاكِسُونَ وَرَجُلًا سَلَمًا لِرَجُلٍ هَلْ يَسْتَوِيَانِ مَثَلًا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ this is the ayah of the Qur'an. What does it mean? It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, think about it. If one man had to worship multiple gods, multiple deities, and please multiple deities, does this make more sense? Or does it make more sense that one man has to please and worship only one deity? And what that basically is saying that the ulama have explained this, that if, as you see in many cultures, uh, many other religions, they believe in multiple deities, they believe in multiple gods. Imagine you try to please one god and you make the other god upset. And by the way, subhanAllah, if you study Greek mythology, I had to study Greek mythology in school. I remember reading about this, that even between the gods, there's a lot of conflict between the gods. That's what they preach, that this, there's a god for this, there's a god of the sea, you know, I think it's called Poseidon. And there's a, you see, there, there's a, a God for this, there's a God for that. There's multiple gods and there's conflicts between the gods. This ayah is saying that imagine if there was a man who had to worship multiple deities and there's conflicts between them and they would get upset that he's worshiping one more than the other. Does this make more sense? Or does it make more sense that a person has to please and worship only one Allah? Allah says, Hal yastawiyani mathala? Alhamdulillah. This, this example is very clear for us. We know exactly what it means. You worship only one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. All praises for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but most people do not know. Now, subhanAllah, when you think about this problem that we have today in our communities, and especially in many of our lives, many times we can't do the right thing. Why? Because what people are going to say? What people are going to think about me? We have this, especially in Urdu, we have this common saying, the loka bolenge, you know, what people are going to say. And that is why I have, if there is nothing you take today from this khatira, just take two things from me today from this khatira. If there's two things that you don't have any control over, just like you have no control over what people like, just like you have no control over qadr, there's two things you have no control over. What people are going to say about you, and what people are going to think of you. Wallahi, you have absolutely no control over it. This is the reality. This is the reality. The quicker we understand this, the quicker we can live in peace. Because many of us, we will say what pleases other people. We will do what pleases other people. How many times you go and you see these big, big weddings? They spend thousands and thousands of dollars. $200,000, $300,000. Why? 
because they're trying to please others. They want others to think good about themselves. They want others to say good things about them. In essence, they are obsessed with other people's opinion. And subhanAllah, I remember there was a very a bizarre story that someone called me and told me one time. And the reason why they told me about this story is because they know that what I believe in. They know that I believe in the fact that you should not be worried about what people will think of you and what people are going to say about you. You should, not be, you should not be worried about it. He called me to tell me this bizarre story. And it's going to, take, it's, it's going to be short, but you, I mean, it's a very bizarre story. I'm going to say this because it is. So he told me that one time there was a, a case where there was a case where a man, I mean a family, sort of invited another family into their home. And sort of invited into their family for home, at their home. And that family who were the guests, they stayed at night at their home. And this was for a potential marriage purposes. So this family came, they flew in, they stayed at their home. And the idea was that perhaps the host, his daughter, and the guest, um, or the guest his son, will then get married. Eventually what happened was that there was something that happened at night where there was an abuse that took place. Okay, you get the idea, you get the picture. There was an abuse, there was an aggression that took place from the man towards the woman. And in the morning, when they woke up, this woman said, I don't want to get married to this man. I don't want to get married to this man because he is, he's a rapist. And so what happened was the family... This man called me to tell me that usually if it was any other family, they would have said that no, you have to get married to, you have to, get married to him. Now think about asking a woman to marry her rapist. That, that constant psychological effect that she was going to have to live through, that, that trauma, that torture she's going to have to live through for the rest of her life. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. The parents, they said, that it does not matter what anyone will say in the community. I don't care what anyone will say in the community. I don't care what people are going to think of us. They broke off that engagement. You know how many times engagements happen? Things happen in the middle. We can't break off the engagement. Why can you not break off the engagement? The greeting cards, the invitation cards have already gone out. That is the excuse that we hear a lot of times. So that is why, brothers and sisters, there are five ways, quickly I'm going to run through this, there are five ways to handle this issue to begin with. If you and I, if any one of us here, we are obsessed with other people's feelings, other people's, I mean not feelings, but other people's opinions, and other people, what they're going to say about us, there's five ways to handle that. Number one, you cannot please people at all cost. There's no way. You can, wallahi, do whatever you can to please people. You can only please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is a reality. We today, every single salat, think about this for a moment. This is very profound if you think about it, very deep. You and I, when we pray salat, what do we say when the beginning, at the beginning of the salat? We say what? Allahu Akbar. What does Allahu Akbar mean? <laughs> Allahu Akbar means Allah is greater than, and, the, and after that is blank. It's empty. Meaning that Allah is greater than every single thing. Allah is more important than every single thing in our life. That's what it means. And by the way, I, was, I did a, a short count. If you just pray Salat al-Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, only the Fara'id. You don't do any Tasbihat, you don't do any Nawafil, no Sunnah, no nothing. You say Allahu Akbar at least close to 95 times a day. Do you know that? You say Allahu Akbar 95 times a day. What does Allahu Akbar once again mean? It means that Allah's opinion means more than anything to me. Allah's happiness means more than anyone else's happiness. Allah's approval means more than anyone else's approval. Allah's support means more than anyone else's support. And, most, and the most important thing, Allah's pleasure means more means the most to me more than anyone else's pleasure that is what allahu akbar means so when we live in a life when we are obsessed about other people always remember that we have to please allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is why aisha radiallahu anha she says in a hadith this is found in tirmidhi it is a sahih hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that whoever works hard strives and i i, I mean i'm not giving the exact hadith but in a nutshell 
whoever strives to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while he may make some other people displeased with him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be on his side. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be sufficient for him. But anyone who, dis, who, deple, who displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that he can please other people, the people that he tried to please, Allah will make them become displeased with him. This is a reality. The more we try to run after people, the more we're going to get, you know, the more we're going to be pushed away by people. This is the reality. So that is why, first thing is, that we always keep the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in front of us. Number two, always remember that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also went through this. This is not, this is not something new. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, people had opinions about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. People accused him, people mocked him, people ridiculed him, people said things about him which are not even true, spreading misinformation about him, calling, calling him a kahin, calling him a sahir, calling him a majnoon. There were people's opinions. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always kept what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in front of him. So the fact that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went through this is a reminder for all of us that if you have true faith and you go through something like this, remember that my Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also went through the same thing. Number three, look at the issue. Whatever people are saying, they may have an opinion about you. Just look at it briefly. If there is seriously an issue, then there's nothing wrong in fixing it. Yes, some people can come and provide their opinion. If I'm doing something that is wrong, then I need to correct it. There's nothing wrong with that. Number four, do not let other people's opinion dictate how you behave. Who's more stronger? Are you stronger or people's opinions more stronger? If people's opinions can drive you crazy, if people's opinions can alter your behavior, that means that you are a weak person. That means that their opinions are stronger uh, than you are. So that is why you are the driver of your car. You are the driver of your life. You're the one who's controlling your life. You always, we always should make sure that we don't let other people's um, opinions dictate how we behave. And finally, always remember, whatever people have said about you, whatever people would think about you, they have to answer to Allah on the Day of Judgment. Abu Darda radiallahu an, he was one time sitting around with some sahaba or some, some people, and so he began to say that there was a time, he said that there was a time where people were like leaves and there was no thorny branches. People were like leaves. Now what's more sharper? Of course a thorny branch is more sharper. These are soft. Basically what he's saying is that there was a time where people were soft and they were not trying to hurt each other. Then there came a time where those leaves had vanished and there was only thorny branches. Meaning that people were always trying to attack each other. People were always trying to harm each other. So at that time, the, his students, they asked him that what do we do in that kind of situation? He says, that if you criticize them, they will criticize you. But even if you leave them alone, they will still criticize you. Even if you don't do anything to them, they will still criticize you, and they will not even leave you alone. And at that time, they asked once again, then what do we do in that kind of situation? He said that let them take your name. He said that loan them your reputation. This is what he said exactly. He says, give them a loan. Give them, loan them your reputation. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give back your reputation on the Day of Judgment. People who attack your reputation, let them do it. Let them say whatever they want. It's dunya. It's going to come to an end anyway. On the hereafter, inshallah, there will be, there will be full accountability. So once again, this is something that I'm, I'm once again reminding all of us here that how we need to handle our affairs. And as I said, if there's nothing you take from this, remember two things. There's two things that you cannot control. Like there's many other things you cannot control. Two things you cannot control. People's opinions about you and what people are going to say about you. At the end of the day, we always try to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq inshallah. Wa jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. إن المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والقانتين والقانتات والصادقين والصادقات والصابرين والصابرات والخاشعين والخاشعات 
والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما